Hi there, and welcome to Little Garden on the Prairies. So it is still at least a month, if not more, before I can start moving my plants outdoors. It is still very cold here on the Saskatchewan prairies. Sadly, we're having one of those springs where it's very cold and wet, um, which is, you know, really not a bad thing as far as uh, farming goes. We do want the moisture. I'd hate to complain, but lots of times at this time of year, I'm already outside getting my pots ready and digging in the dirt. And it just hasn't happened yet this year. We cannot control the weather and every year we have different types of springs. This is just one of those years where it's a little cool. But there's still lots of stuff to do indoors as far as all my indoor starts. And in today's video, we're going to be doing some pruning, or maybe no pruning, some thinning and some up planting of some of my different plants indoors here. So let's get started. So these are my five mystery pepper plants that I started indoors from seed. Each of them are a different variety. Um, I think I had done all sweet and just medium heat. And as you can see, I mentioned in a few other videos, I have forgotten to mark these when I planted them. And they went under the grow lights and I have no idea which each one of these specifically is, but they all are looking beautiful. So they will just keep growing. I'll put them out in the garden this summer and we will see what kind of uh, peppers we get from each of these. So one of the reasons that you top off your indoor seedlings sometimes is to create a much fuller, bushier plant and then hopefully get more fruit from it. So naturally um, with the peppers, that is something that they recommend you do most of the time. And I always have done that. I top them off and they shoot out a lot more branches and blooms and it does really work. They do get fuller and thicker and produce more blooms. But I just uh, watched a video called Do Not Prune Your Peppers and it was put out by Jeff from the Ripe Tomato Farms. He has a gardening channel. He's on the west coast of Canada and he has so many great videos. I highly recommend watching him. But he did an experiment with peppers to see if, uh, you know, topping them off and making them fuller with more blooms is, turns out to be better as far as the harvest um, compared to just leaving them and letting them grow as is. So in his experiment, um, he's growing in a shorter growing season than, you know, some of the people in warmer growing zones south of us. I myself have a very short growing season of only approximately 110 days. So what he discovered is that in that shorter time frame, you top these off, it does actually, you know, send out more shoots and more blooms and makes a fuller plant, but it does delay the time um, to harvest and the size of the fruit that you get. So I'm convinced that just leaving these as is, letting them grow, and bloom and produce fruit in the short time frame that um, we have here on the Saskatchewan prairies is the best route to go. So I'm not gonna be doing anything to the peppers this year and we'll see how that turns out. Something that I will for sure be doing some topping off and thinning is to my petunia flowers and my snapdragons. They are starting to try and shoot out little blooms and flowers and snapdragons are getting fairly tall and gangly and being I still have another month to keep these indoors I think cutting them down will help um, kind of slow their growth develop more stronger roots and just keep them going until it's time to plant them outside so for the snapdragons I've just been uh, going about two sets of leaves up the stem and then cutting just above that second set of leaves. I'm hoping that these will um, maybe bush out a little bit more and it will obviously slow them down on trying to send out any more blooms. So wherever I see a bloom starting on my petunias, I'm just snipping that off and they seem to send out longer uh, shoots kind of from the side with their blooms sometimes. So I'm just going to be snipping them off 
slowing down that growth for now. And after I've given the flowers a good pruning, I like to give them a feeding with this water soluble seaweed fertilizer. I just mix it up in a container, a cap full, and give it a good drink from the bottom. So these are my coleus plants that I had taken cuttings from a couple coleuses that I had overwintered, rooted them, and then transplanted them into these containers, and they are looking so beautiful right now. They don't need a whole lot of pruning or thinning, but um, they're always the odd one that has little flowers at the top that I will pinch off whenever I see them. But for the most part, they're doing great in these containers and we will be ready to go outdoors in a month or so. So as you can see here with my tomato seedlings, they are really taking off. I have them planted in these solo cups that I only filled halfway up and the plants are starting to grow outside the containers. My ground cherry only sprouted one plant, but that's okay. I think it'll be all right. So what I'm going to do now on each of these tomato seedlings is just pinch off these small leaves at the bottom of the stem and fill these cups up with more potting soil. So with this method I'm using by burying the stems even further here with this potting soil, the little tiny hairs that are on the tomato stems will turn into roots and create a very strong root ball, getting these plants ready for uh, moving outdoors, hopefully in another month. So these are the two beefsteak tomatoes that I had planted quite early because I wanted to just demonstrate the method that I was using with my tomatoes this year where I only filled up the solar cup halfway when I started my seeds and then once the plant grew a little bit higher I removed some of the early stems and topped it up with more dirt. And as you can see I have a really strong beautiful tomato plant here. I just wanted to show you the size of the stalk here. And if I remove it from the cup without losing too much dirt, you can see how that first half of growth here has produced a lot of roots. And then since I added all that extra dirt, you can see how the stem all those little tiny hairs have now developed into more roots. So I have a really good strong root ball here, a very strong plant ready to go into the ground. But as I said, it is way too cold to put any plants outdoors. This would surely never survive out there for at least another five to six weeks. But you can see it's getting very root bound and it needs to get into some kind of a bigger container. So fortunately, I have a grow tent here in my basement. I'm going to plant these up into larger pots and put them into my grow tent. So as you can see, I already got some blooming action on these plants. So if I can keep these going in my grow tent, I should have some uh, beefsteak tomatoes before summer. And in another month or so, all these little tomatoes that I just added a bunch of soil to should start looking like this guy here and I will start hardening them off and by the time they're ready to go to the garden they should be a really strong tomato plant. So with my onions here that I started with seed I've already given them one bit of a haircut about three weeks ago and they are growing back again so it doesn't hurt to give them another trim again I usually like to use the the green tops here in my cooking so I'm just going to cut back these a little bit more today like I said these smell beautiful and they are really nice just to chop up into my salad or into an omelet so by cutting down the, the tops a little bit it helps uh, send them the energy down into the bulbs and the roots and get them 
bigger and stronger. You can just smell it in the air. There's a beautiful aroma of fresh green onions right now. It's really nice. So I have no thinning required here for my cucumbers that I've started indoors, but I just wanted to give you an update on the three types that I had planted in containers here. So this is my lemon cucumber. It is coming along really nicely. It's got lots of big leaves coming now, so it's looking good. And this is the cucumelon. I got three sprouting here now, so I'm pretty excited about that. And my other ones, my apple cucumber seeds that I planted, I've planted probably six or seven of them over the last couple weeks and not seeing any germination. So the seeds must have been just um, no good. So it doesn't look like I'll have any of the apple cucumbers. Okay, so I just wanted to quickly show you how I am going to pot up these two beefsteak tomatoes that are, you know, bursting out of these cups and they need to get into bigger pots. I can't take them outside yet for another month, so I'm going to set them up in these grow bags here and put them into my greenhouse. So these grow bags were used outdoors last summer to plant things in, and so they had soil in them. I've had them warming up in the garage for the last couple days. Now, I normally don't like bringing in pots that have been outdoors, uh, growing outdoors into my home because that could bring pests and bugs into your house, which is always a pain. But um, I kind of didn't have any choice. I thought these would work really good. They're perfect size for these bush uh, beef steaks. So I'm going to take my chances. Uh, hopefully being outside in the freezing cold all winter has killed off any, any bugs or eggs that were in the soil. I also have these uh, tomato cages in my house because I've been using them all winter for my indoor growing so I've set these up into the bag so that these tomatoes already have a nice sturdy trellising system. Okay so there is the first tomato plant all set up in its container ready to go into the grow tent and hopefully produce some tomatoes before the summer for me. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video and learned a few tips and tricks on how pinching and thinning your indoor seedlings helps make a fuller plant and a stronger plant ready for your outdoor garden. Please hit that like button, leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.